for, oh, hey, Coach, um, a lot's been said about Gary Bohan and obviously the starting quarterback. Can you give us your uh, take on, on him winning the job and also your whole room, Katravis, and then the future of Byron Brown, just what, you, what you're going with going into the season? Sure. So, you know, GB, since he's been here, has been nothing. He's handled this whole situation with first class. We've all been around guys that have come in a situation and, and maybe have played at a previous spot. And, and in his case, not only played, but had a high success rate. You know, he's very successful where he came from. And go into those situations and kind of just kind of be like, all right, I'm here. This is it, blah, blah, blah. And he's just – all he's done is put his head down. He wanted to earn this the right way. He wanted to earn the respect of the guys that are here. He, he took the respect, hey, this is a team that's been in place. I'm coming in here. I got to earn that right. And he's been nothing but first class the entire time and, and has played at a high level during practice. So um, having that, that experience back there, that's one thing that you can't buy is experience. And to have a guy back there that's been through the wars and through the battles and it's games that have been heated and uh, have been in those two-minute and four-minute situations. So when he goes out there, like he's been through it, you know. So that advantage has been, you know, very you – know, has shown itself through, through camp. Um, but he, he's done everything the right way. And he's really done a great job of making our quarterback room very, very close. You know, he's taken up uh, Travis Marsh underneath his wing, so to speak. And Dre is a guy that uh, has come in and, and, and worked and, and continue to work. And he's continued to get better. And he's improving. And, and GV's done a really good job of trying to get Travis and bring him along. All right. And so excited, excited about th that aspect of it. They're very close along with Byron Brown. You know, Byron. Those, you know, those two guys, Travis and Byron, were here in the spring, and they were they were kind of close, but now the, all three of those guys are very, very tight-knit groups. So our meetings are fun. They uh, we, we, we get to talk about a lot of things. We cut on each other, and, and uh, we can coach each other hard and bring each other along. So when you have that kind of chemistry in that room, that that's big. Thank you. Leo Haggerty. Coach, two questions. The first one. A bowl game and an opener is the only time where you have more than a week or two to prepare. Are you afraid of paralysis of analysis, just having too much time to put in too much stuff? That's a great point. And, and that is absolutely the case. I think a lot of people could talk, you know, I've, I've done different methods over the years of how to prepare for an opening game. And sometimes that is an absolute case. Um, you know, every, every coach that's ever called plays can kind of maybe go back to a scenario or a year where maybe that was so. You know, what? here's what approach I've taken, and, and we've looked at BYU a ton, don't get me wrong, but, you know, with with the, the mixture of, like, incomers, like, you know, in spring ball we had a team, and all of a sudden we had some more members since spring ball. You know, the traditional way of, like, hey, you know what you kind of got you're going to line up with? You know, nowadays with the roster management, you know, we all know who knows now, right? And so we spent a ton of time really on us, or identifying, okay, what guys do we have and what do they do well, okay? And here's our system. Let's make sure we highlight these guys this way and these guys that way. What can our O-line block? What can our quarterback handle? Who needs to touch the ball? And then really get good at building in those mechanisms and getting good at those mechanisms and getting great at those details. And then we're going to sit there and and now that we kind of know, like we got one more screw tomorrow, and then we, we know what we got, right? So now it's okay. Now we take these BYU thoughts, all right? Now we know who we are, and let's make sure, okay, if this is who we are. We need to apply who we are to what we think we're going to see on that opening game. So because BYU is a great opponent, they're very talented. There's a reason why they're a top 25 team and 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 on move like they are, but that that's where we we spoke focused more time on us, and it's really because of you know your roster and guys that were new in spring. Coaches mentioned to it and and before to you guys have made big leaps and bounds in fall camp than what they were in spring, and so now you got new a new element that maybe going into fall camp you didn't think like oh man this guy's really stepping up. We gotta think about what we want to do here, so. I think it's a healthy balance, but we spent a little bit more time, I think, on us. Um, and now, like, after this Saturday, it's full bore for two weeks, folks, and on BYU. But we have – I don't know, something. Coach, I threw Coach Shoop the curveball yesterday, so it would be unfair if I didn't throw you one today. Yesterday, I celebrated my 43rd wedding anniversary. From a coaching standpoint, how important is it to have that special someone with you 
as a coach? It is everything. So my wife, Tiffany, okay, Tiffany Trickett, she is a West Virginia grad. We, we knew each other in college, and, and uh, I started dating her after college. She is – everything I do is with her right by my side and with her and, my, and our kids at the forefront of every decision. But it's, it's, it's 100% everything in a coach's world because we're, we're here 17 hour days. She even said, like, is it going to be 17 hour days throughout the season? Um, and because we have the guys now in this camp. But I tell you, it, here's the thing I had a great support system at home because my mom is a coach's wife, and my dad, who's 74, is still coaching, 74 is still going. So my mom has been through it. She, so Tiffany's been able to communicate with her, and my mom's got like, look, this is how it is. And, and my wife is the toughest individual I know mentally. I mean, she's phenomenal. She's raising three kids essentially on her own to an extent, something and three times in the years, um, especially during this two weeks at camp. It's hard, but um, 100%, man, our, our coaches' wives, they're a special breed. They're uh, they're special people and we couldn't do what we do without them. And our kids, you know, I'm, I'm a coach's kid. I got to see my dad at night late. I live the life. So I know when I come home, I've got to be the best husband and best father I can be. And the great thing is we got a head coach that puts family first. So, like, after the scrimmage on Saturday, he said, everyone, players and coaches, get out of the building. So, me and my family, we're going to go to uh, the, the, mountain, the jump place, squirrel something, flying squirrel. And we're just going, I'm going to go be dad for that half of the day and husband to the best of my ability. But I appreciate you asking that question. Will Turner. Morning, Coach. It, it, it feels like Travis has almost been written off a little bit, maybe during the spring. He's always played a played with a chip on his shoulder, even when he was with Miami Central back back in high school. You know, what have you seen from him that's that's kind of, I guess, exemplified the playing with a chip on his shoulder, got something to prove mentality? Because it, it almost felt like during the whole competition, like I said, written off for some odd reason. No, I, 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 I'll – I, I wouldn't say that. I, I'd probably – I would use words, you know, Travis, at the end of the day, there's some other issues. There's some other things that happen where maybe there's, hey, we got to work on some things off the field to make sure that we're in position to be able to be count on in the fall and stuff like that. Travis has done a great job with uh, whatever's been thrown his way, he's responded. You follow me? So, again, it was a situation where, like, you have a guy that has a lot of tools, right, a lot of tools. Sometimes when you have a lot of tools, things come easy, and when things come easy – you don't have to sometimes like apply yourself as hard as maybe a guy that doesn't have those tools. That's just hard, hard, hard trying to like just do everything he can to even get remotely close to that guy. And Travis right now it has done a good job in the last probably week of really trying to like focus in on what do I got to get better at? Here's where I got to go. And I'll tell you this, here's what you'll get. Like he is a guy that has been a great teammate all throughout. And that is a characteristic that a lot of people don't have nowadays. That, that if it doesn't if it doesn't go their way it can sour them but our room through and through the entire time our room has been has been a great mentality and a great vibe and and the Travis's mentality and approach to everything has been a major part of that so he's got to continue to work and continue to get better at the little things um like I said you're going to get what you earn and and he's and he's working to get make sure we always say we have saying work over one whatever I want that work's got to outdo it. Like, you got to work harder. So if I want to be an all-conference quarterback, I've got to make sure the work I put in is above and beyond what it takes to be all quarterback, or all-conference quarterback, just even have a shot at it, to even have a shot. So when they're getting that mentality and they have to learn what it actually takes to do that, and then they have a little success with it, that's when they take those next steps. So he's been doing that. He's been getting pushed. The good thing is I know where Scott Travis is from. I've known his high school coaches. Uh, for a long time. So again, like there, there's, there's a, there's a trust there that, that we both have with each other. It's like, look, I, I know I've seen you come up, you know what I mean? I know your coaches. All right. So now it's, it's really for us just grinding and trying to get better. And he's done that. He's done it. So I wouldn't use the term written off. It's at the end of the day, like you're going to get what you earn and he's earning more now. So he needs to continue to earn and continue to put himself in position because being a play away, you know, it, no one cares who's up. They just want that person to produce. So we got to have that mentality that we got to be ready to go and to play at the level that's going to take to win. And then, and then one more, just kind of general question that that we're we're seeing in college football over the last couple of 
a couple of days, really. You know, obviously the situation at USF has gone on over the last week, very similar situation in Western Kentucky between Austin Reed and, uh, and, and your guy, Jarrett, who, who started the last two years at West Virginia, a guy that I'm sure you know pretty well. Seems like he's landed at Troy. Um, you know, just what's your take on kind of this whole – Coach Scott talked about it at length on, on, on Tuesday. Just kind of what's your, what's your whole take about, you know, uh, if a quarterback loses the job and then enters the portal pretty quickly after to go try and find another spot? Well, you know, it's just where we're in now. And, you, and it's really just – that's why it's critical to make sure that these guys, you're consistent. Like you're just coaching the entire time and, and you're giving these guys the same you every day. You know what I mean? And, and I really try to do that on a daily basis, but I love all the guys I've ever coached. I do. I mean, I wish the best, I'll put example, my brother transferred Clint, you know, Clint played at Florida state and competed, went through the spring and he was a guy named James Winston and they didn't name a star yet, but Clint that's a coach's kid. He looks over, he's like, that guy's pretty good. And he decided that he wanted to go somewhere else. So, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, if, every individual ha, ha, has what they believe is their best interest at heart. And every coach out there is trying to, again, make sure they're doing what's best for their team, but also for the individuals in that room. You know what I mean? And they're going to coach and pour into all those players. So nowadays it's just something that you have to, to adapt to and, and be ready. You're sitting on your back foot waiting for that curveball. You never know what's going to come, good or bad. So, um, and like I said, like Coach Coach uh, Scott said, the portal giveth and it also taketh away. But whoever's in our room, we're going to go with and we're going to coach crap out of and and pour into and, and believe in. And anybody that's ever played with me, I mean, like I said, I, I'm going to give them everything I got. And, they're, and they've all given me everything I got. I couldn't be happier with the guys I've had. So uh, anybody that's with us, we're going. Anyone that's, that's not, we wish them the best of luck. And uh, we're going to move forward that way. Thanks, Coach. Joey Johnson. Yeah, Travis, one more on Travis, if I could. You know, I can't remember the timing exactly, but you came in and it, it didn't, look, didn't look like he was going to be here, and now he is back. And I think, you know, he said he's learned some lessons along the way. You know, the grass isn't always greener, things like that. He's gotten some nice lessons as a young man. Um, have you picked up on any of that? Do you think he has a different perspective? Has he, has he matured in ways that he didn't anticipate now and he's going to be much better for it? For sure. For sure. You know, Travis, he, he's a guy that, you know, is a big personality and, and that's a gift. Like he could go into any room and, and fit in. Like he, you could literally put him into any room of people or any demographic. And he has that personality where he can like be able to get everyone in the room to smile, laugh and communicate. And that's a gift. And that's what help him out. Not only during in football and in the huddle and on the sideline and in the locker room, but also in life when it's done. So, the one thing for him is, you know, he know he knows with me, like my number one goal is to make him better. That's all I care about. I just want him to be the best version of himself, not compare him to anybody else. All right, he's enough. He's, he's got enough talent. Now it's just about making sure that Travis is the best version of Travis that he can be. And so he knows that everything I do for that I'm coaching him is to push him to get to that point. And again, sometimes it's pushing him where he if he doesn't want to go, I'm gonna push him even further. Where if he is taking it there, then I keep pushing a little bit more. And uh and we've and he's done that and he's responded. So again, very pleased on that aspect. He has learned lessons. He has he's a different guy now, without question, than what it was when I got here in January so far. So looking forward to that continued growth. Yeah. Any questions for Coach Trickett this morning? All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Uh, yeah. Yep. You can see yourself sit back in that chair so you make sure you keep your head in. Ah, perfect. Got it. All right. Turning tackle Trey Jacobs. Joey, you want to kick us off with Trey? So, Trey, we, we, we see evidence all the time of, of the offensive line, how close you guys are. You do things together. A uh, lot of experience on this line. Uh, how would you describe – what you guys have in terms of relationships and how that can translate to your play on the field this year? Um, I would say it's a brotherhood. Really, just it takes it takes five to make a fist. So my thing is, we just been since since we all got together, it's been we all been getting closer and closer. And on the field, it just translates. You got your brothers back no matter what. And so those attention to details matter. 
So, yeah. Thank you. Will Turner? Trey, you've kind of been maybe the unspoken of the uh, of the uh, guy of the offensive line. Obviously, they talk about the three guys on the left, but just you know, for for you, just you know, what do people need to know about Demontre Jacobs and, and and kind of give yourself maybe a stage here? Um, honestly, I'm not really too big of a guy who wants to be in the media. Like I, I don't mind speaking, but I'm just going to keep my head down. Demontre is going to work hard. He's going to give you everything. He's going to be intentional with everything that he does. And he's going to, like I say, just do his best to go out there and dominate every play for the people on side of him. And then for, for you last year, obviously you, you played a lot of blindside tackle uh, last year with a left-handed quarterback. Now you transition to a right-handed quarterback in Gary Bohannon. Um, do things change a little bit? I know you were uh, you, you played a little bit of blindside tackle with with McLeod a couple of years ago, but just does does anything change? You know, what's um, what is there differences? I wouldn't say it's too much of a difference. I would say just keep the guy in front of me and keep Gary as protected as possible. I don't really try to overthink it too much, but yeah. Theo Haggerty, say that again. Andre, you're going into an opener with Brigham Young. How important is it to know that you saw them last year? You're not going in completely cold. Oh, it, it, it's, a, it's a great feeling having an idea of what you're going against. So you can already be mentally and physically prepared to face what's in front of you, to face the opponent that steps out there se September 3rd. So it's, a, it's good having a nice little recap on who they are and who they're, who they're possibly going to be coming into this season. So, yeah, it gives you kind of an advantage. You, you know, when you look at your offensive line, just in terms of starts, it's in, I think, the top three. It may be the top one in NCAA football. You've been with these guys so long, you might as well take them home for Thanksgiving dinner, right? Right, right. What, what is so important about having that familiarity? Um, just it, the game becomes second nature after you play it for so long. So all those starts accumulating across the whole offensive line, I feel like it's good for us just having the experience and being able to see pitches before they happen and be able to protect our guy behind us as much as we can, as best we can. Joey Johnston? Yeah, a Trey, according to – some of the people on the program and your teammates, there, there's rumors going around of you having this great volleyball ability, this explosive athletic ability you recently displayed. Um, I know your mom's a coach. Right. So is this, is this true? Do you do you have some hidden skills that you've shown oh, I, recently? I, I, I get down. I get down. I get down in volleyball. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, is that I, – I know you're not a volleyball player, but is that an example of – of you know, with your size that you have this explosive ability that that you can display that, that comes yeah. out in football too definitely definitely i feel like i'm pretty versatile as an athlete so mostly whatever comes i pick it pick it up pretty quick but football yeah football is it is it hard as an offensive lineman is it nice to be called an athlete i mean sometimes they're not you know big it guy is. that it, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good because sometimes people stereotype offensive linemen as big, fat guys who just sit up there and block, but there's way more to it. Yep. Thank you. Will Turner? You guys brought in some some transfer talent. Um, you know, just kind of how are some of those new guys uh, to the room coming along? They, they, they're transitioning so well, and I feel like just with Tom, they're going to be – in and rolling with us like it's not they're picking up everything so just teaching them and they're getting a better idea of how to see the pictures and pick up the blitzes and just everything from the top to the bottom everything is just trending the right way anything else for trey this morning okay thank you trey all right thank y'all thanks trey <laughs> Back to you.
Thank you, Trey. All right, Brian Batty, our returning uh, All-American. We'll start off with Leo Haggerty. Brian, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm a special teams guy, I'm telling my kicker, if you kick it to Batty, I'm taking your scholarship. Are you afraid that people are going to stop kicking it to you? Yeah, uh, yeah, we are. We got game plans, and we know a lot of teams are going to try to do their best to kick away from me, but – uh, I'm going to just do my best for the rest of the uh, kickoff return unit. Uh, even if other guys get opportunities or uh, get the ball kicked towards them, I'm going to do my best to still do something and try to get some big blocks. Uh, and then even when I do get the ball kicked to me, I'm going to just try to do my best and put some points up on the board. Whatever. Uh, now, if they kick it to you, take this through the time. Do you count in your head like, one, two, three. Do you do get to a point where you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to not return this? What goes through your mind when that ball's in the air? Uh, honestly, I'm always like in my head, I, I'm, I'm returning every kick, uh, every time it gets uh, kicked to me. Uh, usually, uh, Coach DePrada and Coach Scott uh, let me know uh, whether or not, uh, like, how far in the end zone to take it out from. And, uh, and if it's like, if it's a long hang time in the air, Sometimes, just depending on where it lands at, uh, we'll let it go through the end zone. But I don't really count in my head. I just let it play out. I try to peak the uh, kickoff unit as they're coming down while the ball's in the air for a moment. And then I just catch the ball whenever it gets close. Thanks. Joey Johnson. Hey, Brian, as, as, a, as a continuing public service announcement, can you pronounce your last name? And tell everybody why you pronounce it the way you do. Oh, uh, yeah, my you pronounce my last name Bat T. Uh, so like the easiest way for me to really put it is like B A T dash T, like a bat and a T. Uh, that's really the easiest way for me to like explain it. But uh, I don't really get I don't really get upset when people mispronounce it. I know it's not purposely, so it is what it is. But it's Bat T. That's how you pronounce it, back to you. Also, with, with Kelly Joyner being down for a period, how does that change your role in the backfield? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we lost Kelly uh, to a uh, fractured foot. Uh, he'll return hopefully midway through the season. Uh, praying for a fast recovery for him. Uh, but without him being here, uh, of course, I have to step up a little more on the offensive side. Uh, I get a, a lot more opportunities, I say, uh, back there. Uh, I'm just, I'm ready for anything that comes my way. Uh, and I know I'm going to have to step up even more. Me, along with Mangum and the other running backs, uh, we're going to have to step up a little more because Kelly plays a big role in our offense, especially in our position. Thank you. Will Turner? Uh, with the with the consensus All American uh, status, did you go back to Sarasota and did people treat you a little bit differently this off season or was it still kind of the same? Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people just congratulated me uh, on being uh, an All American. Now uh, I wouldn't really say treat me differently because I mean it's always been love from the city, uh, and yeah, that's about it. I was just curious if they threw the red carpet out at at, uh, at, at Sarasota High, but nah. Um, guy that I've been guy that I've been wondering about is is Kwan Powell. Uh, you know, obviously last year was was missed the season with the with the knee injury. Um, Jer Jaron talked at length about him uh, in a in a previous uh, media veil, but he just. You know, what have you seen out of out of Kwan that that kind of gives you some excitement for what he could put together this year? K1, he's, he's a great running back. Uh, he came in as a true freshman last year. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt during uh, fall camp of last year, so he wasn't able to play any games. But while he was here uh, practicing, he showed a lot of explosiveness. He's, def he's a great back, for sure. Uh, and we're excited that we'll be getting him back at some point this year. Uh, he's been out practicing with us. Uh, he hasn't really been able to do any competition yet, but – He's moving around pretty good. Uh, he looks good out there, and we're excited to have him back. He's the 
he's the young guy of our group, so he looks up to all of us, and we do our best to uh, uh, keep him motivated and keep him going. But he's definitely he's definitely going to be a big time player in the future. Thanks, Brian. Matt Baker. Hey, Brian. I wanted to ask you about your NIL agents, the guys over at EAMG. Um, how did you get hooked up with them, and kind of what have they been able to do with you uh, so far, just either through NIL or just as a person? Uh, I actually hooked up with them through uh, a group called the Hawker Family. Uh, they reached out to me uh, along with many other uh, agencies that tried to uh, get me to lock in with them. But uh, I actually, my my uncle, Terrell Neal, he helps me like overlook all that stuff. Uh, he's real smart when it comes to that type of stuff. So uh, we had a... a conversation with the Hawker group, the Hawker family, uh, and we decided to sign a, a non-exclusive deal with them. And uh, they they linked up with EAMG. Uh, and uh, when they, they, they basically just linked up with them so they can help me out because uh, they're more local compared to the Hawker family. So they felt like they could bring me more uh, connections here around Tampa area. And they're doing a great job. Uh, they locked in a few deals for me so far. Uh, can't complain. Uh, everything's been going pretty smooth. And we're really all a big family. They treat me like family, Hawker and EAMG. Uh, and I'm thankful for them. And how big of a help is it to have those that representation? Because um, obviously you've got a lot on your plate, but just to have somebody else who can kind of look out for you and, and take care of that some of, that, some of that stuff. Yeah, it's it's definitely a big help because uh, I be having I do we, we got a lot going on as a student athlete. Uh, there's a lot of other things that's a little more important for us to that we really have to take care of that take a lot of our time. So having them in my corner to help me uh, reach out to other to just businesses and lock in deals with me is is a blessing because I mean I just be sitting at home and I get a text, hey this such and such company wants to do a deal with you and really it's up to me if I want to lock it in and I get the contract and uh, my uncle, he'll help me look over it, see anything that we don't like. We'll uh, send it back and ask them to like revise it and change it up a little bit. But it's definitely a blessing having them in my corner. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, I don't really have to focus too much on that type of stuff. It kind of just comes to me. So. Uh, definitely a blessing. Anything else for Brian this morning? All right. Thank you all for joining us. We'll have a schedule out soon for next week. Thank you all.